Welcome to Sfera Talks. Our guests are real, are real people who live among us. And today our guest is Elina Rantanen. Hello. Hello. Elina, could you please tell about yourself? Sure. Uh, I guess I'm interviewed here now because I'm the chair of the Turku City <laughs> Council, but that's of course only one role <laughs> of me. So, so I'm a 41-year-old Turku citizen and um, a mother of two school children and a head of a Center of Rare Diseases, Norio mm -hmm. Center, work in Helsinki. And uh, a very big portion of my time goes to politics in Turku. I'm a green member of the Turku uh, City Council and, and now I've been chairing the council since 2017. Yeah, three years. Three years. How did it all start? Well... Were, were you born in Turku? <laughs> I was, I was. Oh, so you're Turkulainen? Yes, I'm a Turkulainen. Oh. <laughs> Definitely, yes. And I've, I've like gone to schools here and mm -hmm. And my, I've been living here like almost all my life. A um, bit I was, I was in Spain as an exchange student like a oh. long time ago. But otherwise, oh. I've been always living in Turku, and I've been working in Helsinki for mm. some time. What is then being a Turkulainen? What what <laughs> is it like? What what defines a Turkulainen, and how it is different from others? Well. Some people, uh, there used to be this joke about being born in Heideken, that was the old uh, hospital where children were born, that doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. Okay. But now, now we say that it's a bit of racist to say that you can be Turkun and only mm -hmm. if you were born in Heideken. So, so I, I wouldn't like to define it in any mm -hmm. like, very like, narrow way, you mm -hmm. can be Turkulainen. Uh, from many backgrounds, where you born here, or where you just like, can, did you come here like to study or mm -hmm. to marry somebody or whatever? I think um, it, it, there are some characters that are very typical to Tur oh. Turkulainen people. Uh, For instance, they love their own city, okay. but they like to be say also negative things about it. Uh -huh. So they love it, but then they always have something to complain about it. Uh, what they complain about mostly? Uh, <laughs> <to be laughs> one thing and, and, and building some, for example, now they are building the Tori Park, uh, mm -hmm. the park, park ground under the marketplace. Uh, and whatever decisions, are, political decisions are being made, then mm -hmm. somebody is always unhappy about it. Mm -hmm. So it's a... Uh, I don't know if it's very specific to uh -huh. Turku. I think that it's a universal phenomenon. I think so, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but but that somehow mm. I think is uh, seen as a typical to mm -hmm. Turku people. Yeah. That some sort of uh, positive negativity. <laughs> uh, positive. Okay. <laughs> critical. Critical stance. Yes. Sort of. Yes. But also that kind of. Also, when you start in, in Finnish, when you start asking a question in Turku, you often start it with no. You mm -hmm. don't have this. You, you don't ask that, would you have, uh, mm -hmm. for example, ice cream to, to, that I can buy here? You mm -hmm. ask in Turku, you ask, you don't have ice cream that uh -huh. I could buy. So that you have this negative <laughs> stance to uh -huh. begin with. But it's a very lovely character. It's not mm -hmm. a, uh, only negative. It's just something that belongs to, uh -huh. to Turku. Has it something to do that, uh, with the fact that Turku was a capital for a very <laughs> long time? I don't know, it then derives from a very long, long time because mm -hmm. Turku, Turku used to be, like mm -hmm. it's been uh, nearly 200 years yeah. since uh, Turku lost its like, mm -hmm. position as the capital. So it can't be like that the t today's people would remember it and be somehow like bitter from it. I don't know if it likes <laughs> somehow in their genes that they that they are still thinking about it but because i'm, I'm thinking now about saint petersburg yeah which used to be a capital for yeah. also quite a time yeah. and i think that in saint petersburg people who were born there it's also that you know it, it was once a capital city yeah. and yeah. all these things yeah i don't know <laughs> it's, it's funny in turku actually that people in turku uh, really, they're really proud of their city mm -hmm. and they love to say that it's the oldest city in mm -hmm. Finland and, and it's the former capital mm -hmm. and it's the best place and the river Ora is the best place in the whole world and things like that. But at the same time, so they are ready to fight for other peoples, from people from other parts of Finland oh. who, are, who are saying negative things about Turku. They are ready to fight <laughs> for that. But then they want to 
sort of also themselves to be critical and n not just happy. Uh -huh. So we can be critical here, but yeah. not you guys yes. about our aura <laughs> because it's really the yeah. best, you know. <laughs> Something like, like that. Uh -huh. Okay, so you were born here. You went to many schools. In your, in your, um, on your website, mm -hmm. I found, okay, it's a Google translation, so yeah. definitely <laughs> it's like something. I woke up to the state of the environment and the injustice of the world in middle school when I got involved in NGO activities. Can you, can you remember that? Recollect? I can, I mm -hmm. can remember How that very clearly. I, were, I was 16, I mm -hmm. think, maybe 15, but when I was 16, I, maybe I, I started to think about more closely these issues when I was 15, but then I got active when I was 16 mm -hmm. and I went to work in this uh, children's mm -hmm. summer camp oh. of, of nature camp. And but, I, but when? I mean, like, uh, 50, when I was 16, 50, uh, yeah. How, how did it come to you that there is injustice? So, did you wake one day and no, say, hey, I, it's all injustice? I uh, don't think mm -hmm. it was one day, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe at the time, it was like 1990s at the mm -hmm. time, uh, there was a lot of discussion going on about Agenda 21, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Rio meeting where they yeah. uh, had these plans how to make mm -hmm. the world more, more sustainable. And I read those, um, like, for example, school books said something about that already at that time, but not very much. So mm -hmm. it wasn't discussed climate change and things like that weren't discussed very much at mm -hmm. school those days, but something. And then I read in, in like magazines or mm -hmm. things like that. it wasn't internet wasn't at the time available. So I don't know where I actually read all these mm -hmm. things, but 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 somewhere anyway. And I remember I was a ed uh, not editor, but I, I wrote to my, our school ma magazine mm -hmm. and I wrote an article. Uh, it was handwritten actually at the uh -huh. time about environmental uh -huh. problems. Uh, and what was there? That, when was that? What, yeah. what was there written? What, uh, what exactly I don't did you... remember mm -hmm. actually, but it was something about the pollution of the seas and um, uh, pollution like in general. Mm -hmm. And, and then when writing that, I remember having thought for the first time that this is something that I want to like uh, mm -hmm. fight against or fight for whatever, however you yeah. see it. Well, anyway, something that I want to work for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I during, went to During this, this letter? Yeah, when, when I, writing? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. During that and at the time, when, mm -hmm. during those times before I wrote it, when mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. what I can do mm -hmm. to this. And then I thought that one thing that I can do is to write about it mm -hmm. so that my co like fellow like school uh, mm -hmm. young people at school would also yeah. get aware of it. How many pages were was it? It was like two pages or two something pages, like yeah. that. No, not that yeah. long. But but anyway, influential in my mm -hmm. my mind. Yeah. And and where did you bring this letter? So it was for the yeah, the school magazine. For the school magazine. Yeah. And it was printed there. And yeah. The, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And yeah, but it wasn't very like nothing. It wasn't any like good, good article or anything like that. It was just like uh, just putting out what what I had read from mm -hmm. somewhere else. But it was very important for me when I I got like really excited. I've always liked writing a mm -hmm. lot. So, so I got really like excited that I can write about things mm -hmm. that I, thi I think mm -hmm. that need to be mm -hmm. uh, like said aloud. Yeah. yeah, but after that I got involved with in, in Luontoliitto, an mm -hmm. NGO uh, working with children and nature. In summer? Ch yes, uh, I was working in, in children's summer camp, but mm -hmm. this NGO also uh, does work like Mm -hmm. It's a children's and, and young, a youngsters uh, like nature association. Mm -hmm. So I was were, like involved in their activities for uh, what some did you years. do? What did you do there? Yeah, I was in uh, like uh, guiding the children in their summer camps, mm -hmm. and and then uh, we did some activities in Turku. We had this group in Turku. We, for example, I remember uh, this one. Taipeiden yö, the night of arts, that we were dressed up as animals. Uh -huh. and in we September had, usually. Yeah, uh, in August. In August. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's actually next week. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yes, we dressed up as animals and then mm -hmm. we had this performance, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, opposing bad treatment of animals uh -huh. and things like that. And I started to be vegetarian and at the, during those years and um, 
at sc- when I went to uh, to high school, I I participated in uh, uh, youth environment. I don't remember what it was called. It was like youth panel of environmental issues or something like that. Mm-hmm. Young people's environmental I, parliament. I, I, if we think if we think about this uh, like dressing like animals and like yeah. these performances, how efficient or effective they are actually. Do they anyhow influence people or it's just a way to express yourself basically if you feel something? Mm. Well, I think everything has an influence. Mm-hmm. I don't know how how effective or how big like populations it, mm-hmm. it can like influence on, but I was actually thinking about the same thing now like uh, last year when I or was it this year? I, I got confused, but maybe uh, maybe it was last year. Maybe also this year because of this Greta Thunberg's uh, mm-hmm. inspired uh, uh, Fridays of like mm-hmm. school strikes, strikes, mm-hmm. uh, climate strikes that children don't go to school, but they strike because of the adults don't make in, uh, enough effort mm-hmm. to to fight mm-hmm. the climate change. Uh, and I got a really big flashback uh, mm-hmm. to times when I was like 25 years ago, mm-hmm. uh, that what we tried to do was exactly the same thing mm-hmm. at the time, but our like noise was a lot smaller mm-hmm. and, and dressing up like animals mm-hmm. or, or going to like these environmental parliaments uh, of mm-hmm. young people and things like that, they were very important like to those who participated in them. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how largely they were like seen in the outside. Mm-hmm. I can't really uh, evaluate it anymore, like mm-hmm. how effective it was. Uh, I remember that at that time it was still a bit strange to be a vegetarian, mm-hmm. but today it's completely normal if a 16 year old says that I won't eat meat a- anymore mm-hmm. and things like that. So world really has changed in 25 years. Now that I participated in those cool school strikes, mm-hmm. I also went there to march and, and mm-hmm. wanted to support them. Uh, then I really noticed that the group is so much bigger now. The noise is so much bigger. Mm-hmm. The papers write about it. Yeah. And it's not only because of Greta Thunberg. Of course, mm-hmm. she has made a big uh, like uh, world needs this kind of mm-hmm. ins- inspirers. Mm-hmm. But but it's also because of the time has changed and people have like during all these years got influence because from, you were uh, there 25 years ago uh, and other people who yeah. maybe were not that yeah. noisy let's yeah. say in a good yeah. sense yeah been, they've been listening it all the yeah. time though so, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and also of course the media and everything has a very big influence that has mm-hmm. been talking sometimes these things are discussed very much in media for example mm-hmm. but sometimes not so that much Greta Thunberg mm-hmm. Why so many people hate her? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Why do you hate a school girl <laughs> who is very yeah. like wants only good things? Mm-hmm. I think it's the same effect that uh, um, many people face who try to do something mm-hmm. to make the world a better mm-hmm. place. People feel somehow offended mm-hmm. and and um, uh, maybe feel that the culture that they live in, the food that they're eating, their traveling, whatever mm-hmm. is trying to like to be questioned uh, is somehow uh, uh, like in, in some sort of threat. Mm-hmm. It's threatened by this kind of oh, the uh, status quo. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. that, that they don't want to give up on their lifestyle and, mm-hmm. and the quality of life, mm-hmm. life that they see. Uh, mm-hmm. right now is, is as mm-hmm. they want it to be. And I think that uh, Greta Thunberg and, and other like young, maybe also older, but uh, people who want to provoke, mm-hmm. they, they can say pretty straight that things are like this now, mm-hmm. that, that the world will, will uh, be so warm that we can't live here unless mm-hmm. everybody stops to pol- to pol- or, or cuts their mm-hmm. pollution to some mm-hmm. level. And that requires uh, like um, actions from em- everybody. Mm-hmm. For example, driving, stopping driving, stop flying, stop eating meat, things like that. And when she says it very straight, people mm-hmm. start to feel, but why does this young girl come to say what I mm-hmm. can do? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's because of that. 
but stopping flying, stopping driving, is mm. it realistic? No, it's not realistic, mm -hmm. of course, but I mean that she wants, she can mm -hmm. say it this mm -hmm. way because she wants to like wake people up. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, for example, me as a green politician, mm -hmm. who is, uh, of course, like, for example, Greta Thunberg would, would, would think that I'm totally already uh, like lost case, <laughs> that I'm oh. part of the system already. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I, of course, couldn't say that we need to stop flying or stop driving. But I, I of course, think as well that mm -hmm. we need to cut down all those mm -hmm. things. That we, we only uh, do the necessary mm -hmm. or, or, or only do it sometimes. And, and do whatever we can use, public transport or, or bicycle and things mm -hmm. like that. We do that. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't ever drive or things like that. Or, mm -hmm. or people's... Uh, meat eating has like just uh, all the time got bigger, mm -hmm. which is insane. So everybody could still eat meat, but they would just need to eat it a little less. Mm -hmm. and, and since it doesn't happen, but they eat meat, meat all the time more, then some provoke like needs to be made mm -hmm. so that like mm -hmm. people would listen and would start to think that why, mm -hmm. why would it be important to consider what you are eating. You, you said that you became vegetarian uh, pretty early. When like, I was 16. When yes. you were 16. How was it? Like again, what, how was the change? How did it start and what was the most difficult? Yeah, well, I've been eating fish all the time, so it hasn't mm -hmm. been very mm -hmm. difficult at any point. I remember though, I don't know if it's still the same, but I, I don't think so. But when I was in high school, uh, when I was 16, they needed this blanket that was uh, signed by my parents that mm -hmm. I can like stop eating meat, which was insane for ex like in, in my mind that I can't like I could only get uh, this vegetarian food out mm -hmm. of the kitchen when when they sort of guaranteed that I can do that, that people don't have that kind of they're forced to mm -hmm. sort of eat something. But, but I think nowadays vegetarian food is served in every school, so mm -hmm. you don't need this kind mm -hmm. of... So it's, at the time it felt that you should serve to all of us vegetarian food and not require any, any like permissions from mm -hmm. my parents to mm -hmm. me not to. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, things have changed a lot ever since. But I don't remember uh, anything being really difficult at the time. It was like... Also, my parents who prepared most of the food still when I was living at home started mm -hmm. to mostly eat fish and vegetarian food. How did they respond, your parents? Elena, come on. No, they didn't. This beefsteak, please. <laughs> well, yeah. well, my dad maybe sometimes mm -hmm. used to, or he just forgot. I don't know if he really forgot mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. if he tried to. Well, you can have. But, but he, for a long time, he tried to serve me some mm -hmm. meat food. But uh, of course, he didn't say anything when I said that. Don't you remember that I don't eat this? Mm. But then my mom was very excited actually about it. And because mm. and also uh, we weren't any big meat eaters anyway mm. in our family, like mm. that it would be the most important mm. thing in the world. Mm. So I don't remember it being very difficult. I just remember some traveling from the 90s. Mm. It was very, very, mm. sometimes very funny when you asked for some portions without meat. For example, when I was an exchange student mm -hmm. in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, whenever you went and there was something vegetal, <laughs> so, yeah. so there was a ham in between. <laughs> so yeah. a kind of sandwich with vegetal and the ham was there yeah. and, and whatever. Yeah. So the world really has changed. Nowadays you can have vegetarian food anywhere. What do you think is going to happen in the next five years about these vegetarian things? Will it still, you know, increase this component of vegetarianism? Mm -hmm. Or it will be a plate or, or suddenly people will say, hey, come on. Yeah, I think it will increase all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. But it, it's, not, it's not going to be very fast, I, mm -hmm. I believe. So the shops are now full of options mm -hmm. to meet. So it's not only that you have to, because I think the most like difficult thing for many people, I, for example, have many friends who eat everything, who mm -hmm. eat meat and everything, but they would like to eat more vegetarian food, mm -hmm. but they are out of ideas. Mm -hmm. What's the food that I can cook for my family that mm -hmm. also my children would like mm -hmm. to eat and things like that. But nowadays, like for the past two years, it's been mm -hmm. much more, like much easier than before because you have all these like uh, protein uh, mm -hmm. options mm -hmm. in, in the shop that that you can like 
uh, also children like mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So, so it's, I think that it will increase slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that at some point uh, liberties of people who eat meat mm. can be reduced? Well, that point is a very far. provocative question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that point is very far away. So mm. probably not in my lifetime. But you think that it will happen? Ah, uh, no, no, no. I uh, don't think. But it, if it if it were to happen, then not mm -hmm. in my lifetime, mm -hmm. probably. But well, well, of course, depends on on the like uh, how people like consum what their consumption is. If they want less meat, then uh, we have no problem. But that if the if the like the amount of meat that is being eaten mm -hmm. all the time increases, mm -hmm. then there has to be some sort of limit to mm -hmm. that at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's very, very, very far away from in my perspective that mm -hmm. there would be some sort of uh -huh. <laughs> meat cart with water that yeah, you that's could what, buy. That's what meat, I mean, for like, example. You know, yeah. And people will be like yeah. you know, black market <laughs> yeah. for like beef or yeah. uh, thinking of Greta Thunberg. Mm -hmm. uh, do you th what do you think would happen if she got real power? I think she has actually real power because the power. I mean, I mean positional. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not positional. Reference, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I think that the power that she has is is very. She's taking power very, uh, in in a very like effective way. She's mm -hmm. used this this uh, power that people have that people listen to you and, and mm -hmm. sort of follow you and, and spread your message. It's a very influential form of power. And Influence. I don't think yeah. that uh, if she got some like sort of structural power, structural. then I don't think it would be, it would change things uh, in any, uh, like nobody is the president of the world mm -hmm. that could rule mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. We'd live in democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and in democracy, it's people who decide. Mm -hmm. So it's, if, 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 if sometime we had a population that completely voted for Greta Thunberg, mm -hmm. that, that she and her like party would like win the elections hundred mm -hmm. percently or close mm -hmm. to that, then of course there would be rapid changes in, in like, uh, for example, tax politics for, mm -hmm. and, and things like uh, uh, financial politics that affect on climate, mm -hmm. uh, like pollutions. But but that will not happen because uh, there are so many people who are against her ideas as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So you don't think that if she gets structural mm -hmm. opposition power, she would be actually cutting the liberties of people who do not agree with her? Uh, she sort of green totalitarianism. Look, maybe she would be in that mm -hmm. like. Uh, there are like some uh, individual politicians or individual persons mm -hmm. who are in of that opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, also in Finland, very known like Pentti Linkola, for example, who, mm -hmm. who passed away recently. But they, they, they don't have, even if they got in these positions, they are not there alone. So mm -hmm. in politics, you can never do anything mm -hmm. alone because of the democracy. Because mm -hmm. of the democracy, you need to uh, like be able to negotiate with mm -hmm. all the other uh, members of the parliament mm -hmm. or council or mm -hmm. whatever. And if you are not able, if you just are totalitarian, mm -hmm. that's you have no power. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you require something that, that very few people are mm -hmm. like in the same opinion, then you just can't mm -hmm. negotiate. You just need to do compromises, and and of course that's very frustrating to many many people, mm -hmm. especially young people who have come to search for power to change things. Mm -hmm. It's very slow because you need to make, make compromises all the time mm -hmm. and you need to be very patient and very like long, see like to very long distance mm -hmm. uh, from this point. But yeah, then again, if, if a revolution happens, revolution mm -hmm. can happen anytime that mm -hmm. that some party, for example, for the green totalitarian, totalitarianism yeah. would win, mm -hmm. then that's a revolution. And, yeah. and then things would probably happen in that way, but that would require a big change in the yeah. today's world. Isn't the world changing actually? Because um, the minorities, which must be respected and feel fantastically well, but are they not uh, setting the agenda now? 
Uh, or does it only sound like that mm -hmm. because of the initiatives and because of the like the noise and the like sort of uh, action groups that mm -hmm. they have? Um, they are not setting the agenda, in my opinion, or they they have an effect maybe on mm -hmm. setting the agenda, but it's it's a still world mostly like goes around in the mm -hmm. uh, like traditional way. Mm -hmm around traditional questions like work uh, and poverty mm -hmm. and, and like finances in, in all different aspects. Uh -huh. And for example, when responding to environmental questions and, and climate issues, it uh, usually always uh, goes hand in hand with like financial issues. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare that people would like in any in any like city or country or mm -hmm. anywhere like do some very very uh, mm -hmm. expensive like climate actions mm -hmm. or they could be expensive for example we have done very expensive uh, like investments in uh, renewable energy in Turku but that will cost back yeah yeah, yeah. return mm -hmm. it will return uh, finishing with this period when you were 15 16 yeah even younger, when you were like 10 years old yeah. or 11 years old and uh, Finland had a neighbor of Soviet Union, mm -hmm. what were your feelings then? How did you, how did you perceive that? I, don't, it, I didn't have any very close like uh, ideas about mm -hmm. that. I followed it in very like west side of Finland mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, it wasn't like a neighboring, mm -hmm. that close neighbor, mm -hmm. Sweden was closer to Turku. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have any relatives in East or Finland, mm. and my in my family there weren't no people who had would have like been living on mm -hmm. the other side of the border, and um, it wasn't very like close to mm. me. Of course, in Finland in in eighties and in like nineties, maybe still uh, Russia or Soviet Union was talked a lot about uh, through the war. Uh, like uh, this course, mm -hmm. the yeah. war between Finland and, winter. and yeah, mm -hmm. the winter and, mm -hmm. and the following wars. So, so of course, like also maybe children's uh, ideas about mm -hmm. Russia, where uh, first the first impression that comes to your mind was the uh, like war between Finland and Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I didn't. Yeah, yeah. And then I had a, an aunt of mine who used to make these uh, trips to Leningrad, mm -hmm. and she brought some dolls to me. These kind Ma of Russian dolls. Babushka, no, 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 not no. those, but these these, uh, these dolls. Okay. <laughs> and um, and that was some kind of. Uh, it was exotic because I did it. I never went there, and mm -hmm. my family didn't go there. So so it was something something exotic from some uh, like kind of other kind of world yeah sorry if, but I've been always very interested in mm -hmm. in um, like Soviet Union and and yeah. co like culture and I'm a sociologist yeah. like as a as education so so in that perspective societies mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. all different societies yeah. have always been very interesting to me and yeah I, I hear from many people not only from Finnish people but from British people yeah. or from German people even that when Soviet Union collapsed, they yeah. felt relief. Yeah. Was it the same? Uh, well, I wasn't. I wasn't mm -hmm. also not not relieved. I, I think that maybe adults were... My, my family wasn't very political, mm -hmm. so I don't remember that we had been talking about it very much. So I probably we talked something about it and I, I saw it in news mm -hmm. because at that time people still watched news as families nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. no, nobody reads papers anymore and, and watches yeah. news. But uh, I think that I, I like it, the, the general atmosphere was relieved mm -hmm. and somehow happy, mm -hmm. but, but I don't remember that it would have affected me in any yeah. big way. Y you say that your family was not really political. Yeah. Uh, how did your family actually respond when you entered politics? Uh, it was actually a surprise to me as well. Mm -hmm. The way I entered politics was that in 2004, uh, on the last day when the lists uh, of candidates mm -hmm. to, to municipal elections was mm -hmm. closed, 
I had been already involved in in the green politics in the university, mm -hmm. like in the education mm -hmm. politics, but I didn't consider it as a, like uh, politics yeah. politics. So the, a friend of mine tried to uh, like ask me to be a candidate in the mm -hmm. municipal elections, and I had always answered, "No, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not interested." But in the last days. Uh, he said that we need still to get a full list of candidates. Yeah. We need still some people. And I said, the guy from the party, from yeah. the Green Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said that, OK, you can put my name on it, but I don't uh, do any like uh, election work. Mm -hmm. So you can have my name as a one name of the list. But uh, like I thought that I wouldn't like be anyhow active or mm -hmm. anything like that. And then I told, of course, my parents, and they were like, oh, they were like as surprised as I was, <laughs> but in, in, in not any big way. But then when the campaign started, I, dis, uh, I, I got like, you know, what sometimes happens in the mm -hmm. election campaigns that uh, you get really excited. And I mm -hmm. was actually, I got the feeling that this actually is something that I really like. I like to go to the streets to talk to people mm -hmm. about the problems in our city. Mm -hmm. And I was very, I didn't know anything about things in Turku. I was also reading the paper of Helsingin Sanomat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know anything like that was going on in Turku. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was living here and I could see things happening, but I didn't know anything about what yeah. was going on in politics. So I was all like people came to ask something me on the streets. I was like, I don't know anything about this, but I will try to find out. Mm -hmm. And it was very actually funny and I'm uh, a bit competitive. So I started like, I can't be the person who gets the least votes on uh -huh. the list. Okay. <laughs> sort of. uh -huh. And then I, then I got through, I got elected to the city council. And I was, I remember at that time that I was elected, I got a bit shocked that how many votes did you get then? Something 400 something. 400 without yeah. basically yeah. even wanting that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my I remember my brother asking uh, me before the elections that how many votes will you yeah. like are you going to get? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, but I've heard about 20 persons who are about to vote me. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting something like that. Uh, <laughs> and he uh, was like, what's the what's the worth? Why 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 do you even are as a candidate if you are yeah. like if you don't if you are getting twenty votes? Yeah. And I said well, I'm just a my name on a list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I got four hundred, and I was very very surprised. And um, yeah, but then it got me like the first period when I was here, I I was just learning all mm -hmm. the like I was very like. Uh, attending all the meetings, for example, yeah. in our like uh, council, yeah. the Korean group of uh, city council, and and tried to learn a lot. And what, then I, what did you learn? Well, about everything that was going on, because mm -hmm. politics, of course, never starts when the new political uh, like season mm -hmm. begins. Uh, mm -hmm. It just continues from mm -hmm. the previous months, and then you get when you get involved, you you jump in into a train that is already going. Mm -hmm. And, and you just need to learn fast where it came from, what uh -huh. has happened during yeah. the past years and what kind of uh, like positions yeah. parties have taken yeah. and things like that. So I had, I had no idea about anything like that. So uh, What were the most uh, astonishing or surprising things that you've learned? So you were 2005 it was, right? Yeah. So you were 26 years old. Yeah. Uh, you had an education of which we will discuss in the university, yeah. right? You started sociology, I think. Yeah. Like yeah. So you knew a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You knew a lot. What surprised you most? And you said like, wow, Elena, I don't know that. <laughs> what, what, what? Well, it, there were many things mm -hmm. because, of course, I knew things that I knew, and I had also already mm -hmm. been involved in the like uh, university, uh, like politics mm -hmm. involved in that. But um, I didn't know any anything about the details about the city plans that had been mm -hmm. made in different parts mm -hmm. of the city, about the investments to mm -hmm. how to deal with the garbage in the city. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, those were at least that was something that was going on in very high speed when I started mm -hmm. <laughs> started uh, this. Well, it was a lot that I didn't know. Where should we put uh, like a new bridge and uh, new roads, or mm -hmm. where should we why like build this and that? And mm -hmm. uh, yes, there there was a lot that I learned. So it, it was factual knowledge. Yeah, it facts, was factual. Facts. Yes. Uh, did you learn something about people? Yes, of course. What? 
Well, I, I remember when I got uh, elected, I was horrified. I already, when I was a candidate mm -hmm. before I was elected, that I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. That how can I be a councillor? Because mm -hmm. I don't know anything about these Turku issues. Mm -hmm. But then when I was in the first council meetings and I listened mm -hmm. to all the old uh, people, mm -hmm. or not the old, but, but people who had been already previously there, mm -hmm. listened uh, to them speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I remember having this thought. That, you have nothing to worry about. So I got this Why? feeling that Why? they didn't speak very wisely or in the way <laughs> that, that would have influenced me, uh -huh. like, to, like that I would have got the thought that I'm the stupid one here. Uh -huh. so they talk in a way yeah, that I can do. there was a lot of yeah. this kind of aggression in uh -huh. the air at the time. There was this, especially this one um, racist um, guy who, who talked very loudly and very very arrogantly and very mm. in a very like in a manner that I didn't respect or no one respected in that matter. But, but he was a member of the council. Yes, he was. Mm. And, and that uh, I think provoked the whole discussion to be a not bit like aggressive and, and somehow uh, pe people some of course still pe there are people who use arguments that I don't understand at mm -hmm. all. And when I listened to that, and I was first thinking, well, I can't say anything here because I, I don't really know anything. Mm -hmm. Then I listened to people saying sometimes very, in my opinion, very like stupid things. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, okay, you can say something. You are not the most, <laughs> <laughs> like, the most stupid <laughs> one here. <laughs> uh, uh, th this racist guy, yeah. uh, he was elected. So he got also hundreds of votes. Yes, actually, he was very popular at the time. Uh, is it okay to say his name? Yeah, Olavi Mäenpää. Everybody knows him uh -huh. in Turku, but he passed away a few years ago. Yeah. And before that, he he didn't enter the elections anymore. But he was... W what party was that? It, well, he had. He was always alone. He was uh -huh. one, had this one man, like man parties yeah. because he didn't get along with anybody. Mm -hmm. But but he that changed its name all the time, mm -hmm. that party, because it fell out of some sort of party mm -hmm. register yeah. because it was too small. Yeah. But somehow uh, Suomen kansan sinivalkoiset, the blue-white nationalist party, mm -hmm. was m one name and um, something like... They were all always mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. What people voted for him? They voted for the same things that they now vote for uh, Perussomalais, uh -huh. the Jufin party, yeah. and, and uh, the radical yeah. ones. So what, what are these things? Like the against immigration. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, uh, that's, I think that was his main theme. Whatever this is, was discussed in the city council, mm -hmm. like a plan to build something new somewhere, or uh, finances for the mm -hmm. next year, or whatever, he always just like mm -hmm. talked about I immigrants. Mm -hmm. But uh, then uh, the, I think the other thing that people voted him for uh, and people now vote for Trufins is mm -hmm. the general unsatisfaction to life. Uh -huh. So he was like when he did the campaign, he like was um, going to these bars in mm -hmm. different uh, areas of Turku. Mm -hmm. like. Who maybe are not feeling so well uh -huh. cheered for them and then yeah. went to vote for him. Uh -huh. So I think it's this list, this one theme, and then this general like uh, the opposing generally everything. So people who just don't want, don't like their life. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they yeah. like their life and yeah. life in general and, <laughs> and the decisions okay. that are being made. Like racism, xenophobia, mm -hmm. does it exist in Finland? It does. Uh, it's what very what ways? In, in what ways does it exist? Oh, I think I'm not the best person to answer mm -hmm. this because I've never like experienced mm -hmm. it myself. But but um, it's very visible, I think, right now. After like during the past ten years, when the Trufins came to the like big among big parties, mm -hmm. it's and and also also because of the social the spread of social media mm -hmm. and that you can say anything in social media mm -hmm. basically anything of course there are these blocks and things but mm -hmm. they don't work very effectively so i think it's become like no, like normal and more and more normal to be racist and say racist ideas in like in public in social media in in like papers and things like that mm -hmm. and of course i think it has been racism has always existed in some forms and xenophobia mm -hmm. like 
uh, in people's minds, mm -hmm. and and maybe they have they have been the small small group of people who have said aloud in streets to mm -hmm. uh, to li like people who look like uh, like people that have come from somewhere else. Then maybe something mm -hmm. like uh, not very nice things, mm -hmm. but I think that has now become like sort of more um, so, sort of accepted by those people who are now like voting mm -hmm. also for, for these ideas. So we, the, it sounds like we are regressing in certain it's, aspect. I that's that's how I feel mm -hmm. uh, like uh, relating to this issue. But, but another provocative question, shouldn't Finns mm -hmm. have more privileges in Finland? than immigrants. I, I don't think that's not mm -hmm. my like world view mm -hmm. because in my uh, perspective people are always equal mm -hmm. and whenever there is a society then people need to be equal in that society. Mm -hmm. Another question is that who can be members of that society. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be like completely limitless of course but but uh, uh, there need to be some rules, commonly mm -hmm. agreed rules, that who mm -hmm. can be members of that society. Mm -hmm. But whenever people become members of the society, mm -hmm. they are equal, always. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if they are starting to draw some lines, whether uh, on basis of their origins, uh, skin color, gender, age, whatever, mm -hmm. then we are on a very dangerous like land. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what rules are these so that uh, a person becomes a member of Finnish society? Yeah, yeah well, that's a complicated question mm -hmm. and uh, I think I'm pretty um, uh, satisfied uh, at the t like mm -hmm. the to the rules that exist now. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in Finland to the in immigration poli mm -hmm. politics so that uh, we help those who need help mm -hmm. and, and and there is this protocol that how people can be a member, yeah. like have this citizenship. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like more about integration. Yeah. What to do to be integrated into the Finnish society? Mm -hmm. That's a very important question. And that's mm -hmm. what something that we think very often mm -hmm. also in the city council or not in mm -hmm. the council meetings, but whenever yeah. we are preparing, for example, mm -hmm. strategies, mm -hmm. uh, because the most important thing is the language mm -hmm. and the, some sort of uh, um, help to get work. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know about the uh, situation at, like at this time that mm -hmm. how is the language education going on and uh, do people get enough of, of Finnish language mm -hmm. like lessons and courses but that's something of course very important and I think what I've like been involved mm -hmm. uh, that there are very good projects in Turku going mm -hmm. on about the integration of, of immigrants to the working work life mm -hmm. in, in Finland but of course that can be never perfect mm -hmm. I mean there are, there is always something to do to, mm -hmm. to increase that mm -hmm. and uh, especially like women who are often home with children? Yeah. Um, that's some. That's a group of people that I'm. I'm very like mostly worried about because mm -hmm. the uh, like children often learn the language in the daycare and schools, mm -hmm. and that's another thing that has to be very closely like uh, taken care of mm -hmm. that the children don't fall out of the school system because of their different backgrounds. So yeah. we need to like positively discriminate uh, children with uh, different language backgrounds to mm -hmm. to like be able to we can't accept a situation for mm -hmm. example that is right now that the people uh, that of young people who go to high schools um, the the a very small portion of, of children who come mm -hmm. from uh, a, Nine percent, I think. Nine yeah. percent only. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the smallest in Europe. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very, that's very low. That mm -hmm. go to high schools, and of course, anybody, not everybody needs to go to high school, but that shouldn't be because of the language problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's yeah. There are many things actually, but when the language is important, but the children usually. Uh, when they come here mm -hmm. as a small children or when their parents have come here and they mm -hmm. were born here then they learn the language but the parents who don't uh, have a job mm -hmm. their language skills never like get 
like good enough good. to be yeah. able to integrate completely. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. But also there are a lot of things like, for example, where people live, mm -hmm. of course, uh, affects very much because if everybody lives in the same uh, area, also the example of Varisso yeah. is very like good because mm -hmm. the problems have diminished a lot over there. I've heard fantastically since 90s. It's yeah. like it's a different place. Yes, absolutely yes. Different and it has been now. voted as the happiest uh, area to live in Turku. Oh, really? In this one research. Or not vo voted, but in this one research that was done in, in the University of Turku, it was uh, like appeared as the happiest uh, wow. area to live in. Yeah. And that was because of the like um, uh, feeling of being together. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That the, the biggest factor mm -hmm. of, of that. So, but anyway, it's the problem if if all children in school mm -hmm. are non come from non Finnish speaking families. Yeah. So that's that's why people's living should be also somehow uh, not like restricted. We can't say that you have yeah. to live here and you can't live here, yeah. but we should. Uh, make areas to also attempting to Finnish speaking families yeah. and then uh, again like build different houses in different in parts. Sala, of, for yes. instance, yes. and then the yes. center of the city. Exactly, yeah. okay. exactly. Mm. Yeah. What, what positive things uh, immigrants bring to Finland? Oh, so many positive things mm -hmm. like all, all these cultural issues, for example, mm -hmm. food and, mm -hmm. uh, and their own sort of uh, like music and mm. and like culture in every like different forms and and a lot of workforce for example mm. a lot of small restaurants wouldn't mm. exist without mm -hmm. them there would be many uh, hospitals without mm. caregivers if there mm. weren't for immigrants and and that's i think something that almost everybody agrees on that people in finland are because of the families are so small these days and there will be like a lack of workers and there yeah. already is in some uh, are in some uh, like jobs but there will be a lack of workers in many areas in, f yeah. in the future because of there will be a lack of people <laughs> in yeah. like in general yeah. so we need people to mm -hmm. to come here to work if we are to take mm -hmm. care of people mm -hmm. like old people for example but apart from Workforce, of course, mm. food, music. Mm -hmm. uh, do immigrants bring some attitudinal mm -hmm. uh, benefits? I mean, like some something in their psychology, something in their like attitudes. I definitely believe so mm -hmm. because, for example, uh, in li different languages, the mm -hmm. thoughts are dif like you know you can't like think in the same way in li different languages. Mm -hmm. And when people have a different language backgrounds, they're of course bringing their different thinking. Mm -hmm. And of course, when different thinking comes together, it only doesn't mean different thinking from different like countries or ethnic mm -hmm. backgrounds, but also different like for example, in politics, there is a need to have uh, different people in different mm -hmm. age groups, different ethnic groups, different mm -hmm. like uh, like both women and men mm -hmm. and different like sexual backgrounds, different uh, like professional backgrounds mm -hmm. because we need different thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing, not only the experience that you are living mm -hmm. uh, makes your thinking uh, mm -hmm. unique, but also the language and the background, the cultural mm -hmm. background. Yes, of course, yeah. Do you think that Finnish language, Han, Han mm. actually affects the well lack of gender bias in Finland? Or oh, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is it a result of that or uh, is it a Cause source or effect, of that? So, yeah. yeah, but I, don't th I have never thought that it's a very big effect mm -hmm. or a big cause. So it's just, yeah, but that's, I, I like the word a lot mm -hmm. because it's uh, uh, there is no she, there is no yeah, he. Yeah, there exactly. is hun. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so, but I don't know if how big effect that really yeah. actually <laughs> has. <laughs> okay, your university mm -hmm. uh, studies. What did you study? I studied sociology mm -hmm. first. 
Was it sociology first? It was sociology, uh -huh. yes. I thought that you were in biomedicine. Yeah, or... I was then. Then after that, ah, uh, okay. I, I, start, I made my master mm -hmm. degree in, in the Faculty of Social Sciences, uh -huh. studying sociology. W and what was your thesis about this master thesis? Uh, it was about um, um, uh, the early puberty in adopted children. Early puberty and adopted children. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was very specific issues that deal, dealt with these questions mm -hmm. about um, uh, also about integration mm -hmm. and, and backgrounds and things mm -hmm. like that. But it's a known phenomenon that, mm -hmm. that, that sometimes can happen. Well, yeah, and because it was this kind of health uh, related mm -hmm. topic, then I was asked to become. Um, a research uh, in this research group in the faculty of biomedicine mm -hmm. and and it was actually a project funded by the European Union related to genetic testing mm -hmm. and there was the purpose wasn't to do a uh, study but to make these new recommendations mm -hmm. uh, to genetic counseling in the European mm -hmm. Union and that's what we did but we uh, at the same time I did a, I was the researcher in that group mm -hmm. And uh, uh, be, like, in addition to these recommendations, mm -hmm. I collected a lot of data and analyzed it. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result of that, I also made my thesis. Uh, at, yeah, PhD, mm -hmm. PhD thesis at that department. What was the title? If you the remember? title of that was, I, I don't sure, <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I can remember the title. It was the expectations, um, regulations and I don't remember. No. It was about uh, ideals about of genetic counseling mm -hmm. related to different uh, mm -hmm. genetic testing situations. Anyway, did it anyhow help you in your political life? Uh, no, not really. Uh -huh. uh, only that way that when you, are re you do research, you mm -hmm. learn to like um, analyze data fast, mm -hmm. and that of course helps in <laughs> yeah, politics data, yeah. or or the the the, the general like. Mm -hmm. uh, reading and analyzing yeah. and, and uh, adjusting the information or like, like applying the information yeah, yeah, yeah. is is a like general like skill that is very useful in politics mm -hmm. and in that way also that um, it was a job that went very well together, together mm -hmm. with uh, politics because mm -hmm. it was something that you went to do alone in your yeah. university in this room yeah. and you did it and it, it was very easy to leave from there to the meetings and mm -hmm. it was very easy to combine yeah. with the politics. So in that way, but not like the specific theme, mm -hmm. it hasn't been very yeah. like a big theme in, in my like political part. And, and because of your background, this background, your work in Norio, mm -hmm. right? Can, can you tell about this, what you do? You, you work in Helsinki, actually. Yeah, I, I basically in Turku right now, for yeah. example. And also without the COVID, I, I work quite a lot as a distance work. But the mm -hmm. office is in Helsinki, yes. And Norio Center is a center of rare and genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a third sector, this organization, mm -hmm. we belong to Kehitysvammaisten Tukiliitto. Not for profit, it's... Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, third sector. Uh, Kehitysvammaisten Tukiliitto, which is uh, inclusion Finland, mm -hmm. so uh, an organization for mm -hmm. disabled people and their families. And um, uh, our cast, like, the, yeah, we, we work in many different ways. We produce information about rare genetic conditions. Mm -hmm. We produce information about like hereditary issues in general, mm -hmm. like genetics in general, and also um, we we have these services for families, mm -hmm. uh, mostly families who have a child with rare syndromes, mm -hmm. for example, courses and mm -hmm. uh, these kind of discussion groups and and things like that. And I'm uh, heading this center, mm -hmm. so I don't do work with the customers. All the other uh, mm -hmm. people who work there are doing mm -hmm. that. So I'm just mainly doing the administrational mm -hmm. stuff. So you're managing. Yeah. Right? You have a career in research. Mm -hmm. You have a fantastic career in politics. Mm -hmm. You're a mother. Mm -hmm. What are the life hacks? How do you manage? Well, I manage right now pretty well and mm -hmm. and I think that this corona time has really like clarified mm -hmm. uh, like how to manage it's just that um, you 
I, I think that people can do whatever they want to do or have time to do whatever mm -hmm. they want to do as long as they want to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be like multi, like for example, I couldn't uh, uh, have time to politics if I if I weren't motivated to mm -hmm. sort of put invest my time in it. But yeah. I feel so uh, in interested in what's going on in Turku mm -hmm. and, and, and in that, like through Turku in the whole mm -hmm. world, like how Turku, for example, can be uh, mm -hmm. like for these climate issues, for example, mm -hmm. and equality issues, how it can be a, like a forerunner, mm -hmm. <laughs> then, then it's, it's so motivating for me that I want to put my time in that. That means, of course, that the time is away from something else, mm -hmm. usually my work, sometimes from my family. But then uh, I can, if I can arrange things mm -hmm. that way, then then it just gives me more like uh, energy. energy than mm -hmm. that I would just work, for example, in the in the Norio mm -hmm. Center. Yeah. So it's motivation. Yeah. The key is to like mm -hmm. what you do, and then you get yeah. energy. And even if you didn't mm -hmm. like, for example, mm -hmm. politics isn't mm -hmm. always very nice, and neither is any work. Mm -hmm. I assume <laughs> there are some very boring issues mm -hmm. and some very not nice issues and and but if you still are motivated then yeah. then that's the yeah. what are not nice issues in politics when for example uh, you need to you are of different opinion with other groups or mm -hmm. within your own group mm -hmm. and you need to sort of no when you need to compromise mm -hmm. and uh, especially when the compromise is uh, difficult or when the comprom when there isn't compromise and there is no way to move on, uh -huh. you just keep like running in this circle with our other parties trying mm -hmm. to find a solution, and and there like nobody like gives uh, any mm -hmm. like everybody keeps their stand, yeah. and you have to find something to move on. How and of how how do you do that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. There are different ways to do that, mm -hmm. but. But I think that it requires that everybody gives something like, of course, sometimes happens that way as well, that there are some groups that find each other, that mm -hmm. they, they, they make a compromise mm -hmm. together and the other groups need to adjust to that because they mm -hmm. have a minority any, anymore yeah. left. So it can be done different ways. But I don't like when it gets uh, and, like nasty, when, when, the, like, when people start to use that kind of like um, uh, ways that are like not like dirty ways in my mind when they mm -hmm. start to talk behind their backs mm -hmm. and and that's not very common though and that's mm -hmm. I, I must say that that's why I feel so so like uh, motivated and and uh, I'm willing to be in this position mm -hmm. and in, in Turku because the, the way that politics is done today is very like open and and uh, in Finland uh, in, in Turku at least mm -hmm. it, it's very like you can easily be involved it's not mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. like nobody's blackmailing anyone or things like yeah. that yeah. are there are there specific uh, parties with whom it's harder to deal and yeah of course who, who are those? Well, they are very openly against, for example, the, the left-wing party in Turku mm -hmm. have very openly been uh, saying that they are not negotiating about some issues, that they rather lose their stand than mm -hmm. negotiate about it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's very difficult to negotiate when, when like, mm -hmm. you are not ready to negotiate. Mm -hmm. But usually there is this kind of... Um, um, block of parties who mm -hmm. try to who make it common like a program you mean green and red yeah in, in, well in Turku there are the three biggest parties uh -huh. for example mm -hmm. uh, also the conservatives mm -hmm. and the social democrats and the yeah. green ones who are the three biggest who all usually uh, are like try to find each other mm -hmm. because they have like the lead of the city sort of and they want to yeah. like not to mm -hmm. The, like lead it fighting, mm -hmm. but to like find the common calls and bring them more. Yeah. How many Green Party members are in the Turku City Council now? Fourteen. 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 Yeah, it's the the most that has been during my time. It's it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> uh, 
why, why uh, I've read, I, I was reading about the Green Party and uh, why Green Parties, they are trying, very often they are making coalitions with socialist parties. Mm. Why? In general. In or general, in, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that because of the many like um, goals related to like poverty, mm -hmm. people's equality, also these days relating to environmental issues mm -hmm. are, are shared. Mm -hmm. Soviet Union, 1917, 1918, mm -hmm. uh, the first country actually who gave women rights to vote. Mm -hmm. A very good ideas, socialism, mm -hmm. equal, like you know, everybody. Mm -hmm. What went wrong? I, I really, I really can't say. But mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't say that I'm a socialist, for mm -hmm. example, that I would be for these ideas. Mm -hmm. Of course, the ideas were very beautiful mm -hmm. behind this, the system that actually was mm -hmm. built. But uh, I think that. <laughs> There is something in human being that always mm -hmm. requires some kind of uh, liberty, allowing liberty, allowing you to compete with other people, mm -hmm. allowing you to like um, live like you way you want and to to gain things that you want. And I think that the society needs to. Uh, not to cut it down and, and that was something maybe that mm -hmm. went wrong and and in spite be, that liberty needs to be supported mm -hmm. but at the same time it needs to be guaranteed that uh, and uh, acknowledged mm -hmm. that not everybody uh, can have the same like start mm -hmm. and not everybody can and want to do that so also those who have a little bit less and who mm -hmm. who come from like poorer background or who are like disabled or who have parents that never took care of them or whatever that also they have certain standard of living mm -hmm. and that they are helped a bit more than those who survive on their own sort of mm -hmm. so everybody is taken care of but those who uh, need more are taken care of a little bit better and I think that's what's today's sort of um, ideas of, of, for example, Green Party and the, mm -hmm. and the Social Democrat Party, who, mm -hmm. for example, in the government of Finland mm -hmm. right now, cooperate. But that's not the same as the socialism that went down because, mm -hmm. of, because that sort of uh, tried to cut down everything that you tried to perceive in life, like... Mm -hmm. Equalizing too much. Yes. And, Artificial. Uh, yes. Uh, exactly. Artificial. And, and, for example, we need people who have ideas to, to make companies, mm -hmm. to try to achieve mm -hmm. something. And we, need, we, we don't want to punish them. They, mm -hmm. We need, society needs them and their ideas and their strength. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't still have to take care yeah. of the... We, we don't want to sort of take their profits away from them yeah. because that's the carrot that keeps them yeah, sort yeah, of working, going. Yeah. But we need at the same time to support all others. Yeah. There's the balance between yeah. these. I don't want any capitalist, uh, uh, like ultra capitalist society where mm -hmm. only these people's own efforts that they can be rich as ever and the others like poor as ever. Yeah. That's not a good society. Yeah. But there's uh, this balance. I, is there to... some Finnish secret? <laughs> Finland is a very successful country. Yeah. It doesn't have oil, it doesn't have gas. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's like 5.6 million people. Yeah. And it's successful. Why? I think all the Nordic countries are pretty successful uh, because of some sort of Nordic uh, model of society mm -hmm. that is based on what I was just saying, yeah. that not any, anybody is not being mm -hmm. left. Uh, although it's been discussed all the time that in which direction we are going, that it mm -hmm. we might actually be going to the direction of uh, letting people mm -hmm. alone, but we don't want that. Just the this, this success is based on educating everybody, yeah. like everybody from whichever the social movement, moving from different social classes to others yeah. has been very uh, like easy in Finland. Yeah. And that's a social mobility. Yeah, social yeah. mobility, exactly. 
that's that's one success factor yeah. that everybody can become anything yeah. and that's something that i definitely want to work for not to yeah. like give up on that yeah. we just cannot accept a society where for example boys cannot study as lo long as girls because school system is in favor of girls yeah. we just cannot accept that people like children who come from uh, families where Finnish is not the first yeah. language that they can't learn as as like study as as far as uh, some other kids. We cannot accept anything like that. We need to make those positive discrimination mm -hmm. systems uh, mm -hmm. to make uh, like the school path and the education path uh, easier mm -hmm. for for the groups that it's now that now yeah. seem to like be left behind. What would you change in Finland in general, although it is a successful country? I would like uh, it to be a little bit more uh, like open-minded and uh, like um, tolerant society because mm. what I what we were talking in the beginning yeah. about the regression uh, I don't know if it's actually happening or has it only become more visible Evident, yeah yeah so so it's um that's something that bothers me and many other people a lot because the the atmosphere of, of hate the atmosphere of that you yet just like hostility that you can mm -hmm. feel from some people mm -hmm. it makes the society more uh insecure and and more like mm, something that you don't want to like spend your time in mm -hmm. the streets and things like that so that's what i would like i'd like to uh people's open their eyes to to sort of um, like see that we are actually a good country we need mm. people from other countries to, to mm. live here to go on and and not to and try to make things easy and not always mm. like whenever something goes wrong whether it has to do with immigration and whether it has to do with some other issues such as uh I don't remember any example right now. For example, mm. in Turku we have had these uh, uh, like construction problems with the bridges and stuff. <laughs> yes. Then people get so like negative mm. that this is the end of everything and mm. everything is so wrong and they only see the wrong mm. and the negative thing. Although we are living in the country mm. that is the most one of the most successful mm. and very happy country in these measurements as well. And everything is pretty much okay for mm -hmm. for most of people at mm -hmm. least. So it's like people like like want to spread this negativity and 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 yeah. xenophobia, for example, yeah. is one of the worst. Your advice to people who want to be politicians? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> okay, then our blitz. Lewis Carroll blitz, actually. Yeah. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Raven like a writing desk? <laughs> I didn't understand it at all. Okay. <laughs> Where can I find someone normal? Um, you don't want an uh, Alice in Wonderland answers, but the real ones. The real ones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, in, in anywhere you look around, Okay. Everybody's normal in their own way. Sorry, sort of in their own way. Yes, yeah. that's a good one. Makeup rule forty-two. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> what makes the world go round? Positive energy, goodwill, and uh, will to do things. Okay. Who in this world are you? Oh, that's a philosophical one. <laughs> well. Me, I'm, I'm. Me is me. Okay. Yeah. The best way to explain is. Uh, in a short way. In a short way. Yeah. Is, okay. What would happen if everybody minded their own business? Uh, society wouldn't be as good as it's now that people mind also others' businesses. Mm -hmm. One of the deep secrets of life is. Oh, <laughs> one of the deep secrets of life is that you never come know what comes around the next corner. <laughs> what to do if you want to get to a place you want to be? Just close your eyes. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you very much, Alina. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And that's all talks for today. Have a great tomorrow. Thank you.